we had about a thousand properties under under a master lease. And what when I was speaking with property owners, whether it was a vacation home or a multifamily development, everyone always had the same question. How much money am I going to make? And how are you going to take care of my home? What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I am your host, Mike Shogren, here with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What is going on, E? My brother, good to see you. Um, congratulations are in order. I, I saw the walkthrough of the, of the new hotel. Um, it, looks, it looks fun. It looks like it's going to... That yellow, that yellow is rough. But other than that, and if you guys are not part of our group, yeah, the yellow. We got, we got paint <laughs> samples on the wall today already. That's, that's, that's going. That is that is one of my favorite things when we do paint samples and you just kind of get to paint like the big squares on the side of the building and you just kind of kind of hang back and you just look at it and you're just like, hmm. And I don't know how people like decided like my some of my buildings are also yellow and I've, I've been looking forward to repainting them. Um, they went through a phase back in the day that I guess they they just did not know what a nice color was and they went with those yellows and, and pinks and it just did not hold up well with age but I am super stoked for you guys it, it looks like a very fun project um man I uh for my never-ending journey to a refi I I actually opened up conversation with a bank yesterday and and it's looking pretty promising uh they asked us how we're doing occupancy wise and 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 the fact that we're back to pre-COVID numbers, um, they were like, well, you guys are some of the few that we have seen, especially in the hospitality down here. Um, so we're definitely still very excited in the project. So kind of getting all our ducks in a row um, has been a long time coming, but it just, we just got to keep going, right? And, and it's kind of what we talk about every, every week, right? It's just like, there's some projects that are going to take you a very, very long time, but it's because they're worth it. Like there is this just, there's no other way of saying it, right? So you just need to like keep grinding at it and keep making connections. Um, and there's still the humanity of it, right? Like being able to talk to a banker that you've been talking to over the years because this is a bank that we have spoken to in the past and just bringing your success forward and just being like, look, last time we spoke, we owned this many units. Now we own this many units. We keep expanding. We had this COVID year and we're still here. Um, and people like, I think COVID has been a great thing for good operators because it, it kind of gave us a little badge of like, you survived COVID. <laughs> Congratulations. Like you got to the next level. You survived COVID that in hospitality, you know what I mean? It's, it's been one of the rougher things that's happened to us. Um, so I'm really excited for the industry and just hopefully bringing good news to, to, to our, our listeners for my, for my refi. Um, so I'll keep you guys posted. Love it, dude. I love it. Well, I want to get right into it today. I'm really excited for our guest. Uh, I got to know him a couple of years ago, maybe, and uh, just have a real good working relationship. Amazing company. Um, so today we have Mr. Michael Golden with us from NoiseAware. Quick background on Mike. He's the Director of Business Development for NoiseAware, spearheading partnerships, advocacy, and expansion. He is a focus rate 35 under 35 leader committed to bettering the short-term rental industry and happens to be obsessed with travel, volleyball, and his two-year-old son. So without further ado, Mike, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I appreciate it. And uh, sounds like a good day to join. You guys have some, some really cool things rolling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They've been, been a long time coming. They've been in the works for a while. And it's finally <laughs> uh, nice to get them over the finish line. He's almost there. He'll get that yeah. refi done. Yeah, yeah. The, the million dollar question is what, what paint color are you going with, Mike? <sighs> oh, you, you don't want my opinion. You got to ask the wife. She, she designs them all. That, that's yeah, not yeah. my wheelhouse. Smart I am the, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. sure Mike, I'm sure Mike has an opinion. And then Chris goes like, oh, yeah, no. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Thanks, honey. <laughs> that was great. You did good. 
Take care. I think it's I think it's going to be a a navy with white trim. I think is what we're going with. Mm. Um, and we're doing some cool on the bump outs on the front of it. We're going to do that like stained wood look just to kind of give it some contrast. It'll look nice. It'll spruce it up. So I'm excited. I mean, it's a good property. It's clean. It's in good condition. It just, it doesn't have any curb appeal to it. So you just got to give it a little love and um, yeah, it'll be fun, man. It'll be fun. So why don't you kind of talk us through your background and how you got involved with NoiseAware and, and what you guys are up to now? Yeah. So NoiseAware is a privacy safe, noise monitoring company that monitors inside and outside noise. And you know, I, I met Dave and Andrew, the two founders, at, at the first conference they ever showed up with before they had a product and, and the whole nine. Uh, we were founded when Dave was managing six units out in Dallas and in one quiet weekend, two girls uh, checked in. Uh, for a study weekend before finals, and it wasn't so quiet. Uh, we refer to it as mini Coachella. And these two girls partied from Friday night, literally apparently did not stop until Sunday. And Dave had 15 noise violations from the city. And he didn't know about it until Monday. So he, uh, he checks his mail on Monday and has all these noise citations and uh, he only lived two miles away. So if he had just known about it, he could have stopped it and, and uh, either gotten the girls to quiet down or, or evicted them. And so I figured there, there has to be a, a way to, to monitor this in a privacy safe way. And it didn't exist. So met our co-founder, Andrew, who was building radar systems for the military. And, and Andrew whipped a couple right up and, and kind of moved on and and Dave was plugged into some Airbnb hosting groups, started telling them like what he was doing and stopping some parties. And then everyone said, well, well, we want one. We want one. How do we get one? And, and that's when they realized uh, they were onto something. And, and here we are. I and mean, we've, we work with 12 out of the, the 14 largest companies in North America. Uh, and we work with thousands and thousands of single owners too. So uh, it's a scalable platform from, you know, one user all the way up to companies the size of Sonder. Mm. And so were, were you in, in the business? Like, how did you, how did you see the opportunity behind it? Like they came to you or how did that happen? Yeah, good question. So I've been in the short term rental space, I guess going on seven years now. Uh, I was at a company called rented.com and we were doing at the time master leasing of uh, a bunch of units in, in as many markets as we could. We had about a thousand properties under under a master lease, and what when I was speaking with property owners, whether it was a vacation home or a multifamily development, everyone always had the same question: How much money am I going to make, and how are you going to take care of my home? And under the "How are you going to take care of my home" category, the first question was always: How do you make sure the party's not going to be thrown in my house? Or how do you make sure my residents that, that live next door to these apartments aren't going to be disturbed? Mm. And I started working in the noise aware product into my pitch at Rented. And it helped me close a lot more deals. My close rate went up significantly. And after sending uh, Dave and Andrew pretty much my, my book of business, I realized that I should just jump fence and, and go work for them directly. So... Um, I, I called up Dave and Andrew one day and, and, uh, joined them, uh, a month or two later. Mm -hmm. That's, that's awesome. That. Yeah. That's such a cool story. And, and so do you, do you currently have Airbnbs yourself or you just kind of jumped over the other side of the fence and never looked back or. Yeah. So I've, I live in Auburn, Alabama, so I've rented out my house for game day weekends mm. and, Obviously, noise and parties during game day weekends is, is a concern. Uh, but at the same time, I could make mortgage and a half in, in a weekend, in two nights. Wow. And so it's tough to, tough to not do. Um, so I, I actually used NoiseAware before I started working for NoiseAware. And um, you know, it's, it offers that peace of mind. And it also, like, you know, I had a neighbor that was concerned uh, about my house being rented short term. 
And as soon as I told them that I'm using noise aware and what it is and how it works, they're like, okay, great. So like, you'll know about noise before I even have to call you. So I don't even have to call you. You're, you're going to be on top of it. And it, it really helps uh, kind of keep your neighbors at ease as much as it does keep yourself at ease. Mm. I love that, man. I love that. And it's cool. Like just seeing the trajectory of noise aware, not that I've been in as long as you have, but even in like the last three and a half years, it's just like, it's just commonplace. It's like, dude, if you're doing this at any type of scale or even with one unit, it's just like, yeah, you're going to put one in. It's just, it's just like, it's normal part of the process. Right. And just seeing you guys continue to level up and build all these amazing partnerships and, you know, do all this awesome stuff. It's just been really cool. Like for me as a bystander, just kind of watching it. And we talk about you guys all the time on the show and just recommend like, just get one. Like it, it's a no brainer. Like if you're, I honestly feel like if you're not using it, it's, it's almost like unethical. Like you're not keeping, <laughs> it's, it's I'm, I'm not just saying that it's true. It's yeah. like, you, how can you possibly monitor what's going on in there if you don't use it? Like it's not possible. Well, so First of all, I appreciate that and, and you're hundred percent right. And, and in my, from my experience at Rented, I realized that what we're doing at NoiseWare is it's gonna be standardized and it's already becoming standardized, uh, but it's gonna be just part and parcel for every single owner uh, in the, the coming years. Mm-hmm. And because of, of what you were saying, like to be responsible, like you want to be able to manage other people's homes or your home responsibly, but you also don't want to be a jerk to your neighbors. Like you want the community to still allow short term rentals. And a lot of people, the number one reason why regulations happen in markets is because people are concerned about noise, parties, parking, and trash. Every city hall that's ever talked about short term rentals, first thing they bring up is noise, second thing is parking third thing is trash. And there's actually uh, locations in the US, uh, one just south of UE in Hollywood, mm-hmm. they require uh, noise monitoring indoor and outdoor uh, for their property. And that way it helps keep the neighborhood. It's basically forcing people that, that um, should be doing it to just do it. Yeah. And I think as that becomes more commonplace. Um, I, I think a lot more cities are going to start mandating it. Yeah. And I think they're a great example because they're being super friendly from the very beginning. They, they do put a lot of rules and regulations in place, but they're very upfront about it. And they understand that, especially in the area, has been a huge benefit for the real estate market and for the money just going into the area. And, and usually what happens is people that go in there and buy those properties, they tend to make the neighborhood better. And especially if you can educate them as to how to play the game. Because again, unfortunately, and when we have David on, he talked about the same thing. We're still so young and uh, of an industry that we're still, we still have that like house party kind of like reputation, but we have grown so much past it. And thanks to you guys, right? Like thanks to like technology, it, we can really provide that, hey, like we know what we're doing and we're using things that like even hotels are not using, but to guarantee that we play nicely and we're just trying to make the neighborhood a better place, right? Um, 100%. Yeah. You should use that quote from Mike for your guys' website. It is unethical. (laughs) (laughs) I think think there is no better, like no better endorsement that that is unethical. Um, And the last thing I wanted to say, whatever you are or a host or a um, arbitrage guy and you're listening to this understand the power of of bringing this into your pitch because it's it really shows the home one that you like are really thinking about the longevity of the vacation rental because to me that's that's the main main benefit of being responsible is you guarantee yourself longevity right because if you're not responsible people will get over you real quick and then fines and everything else yeah, hundred percent. Now I can speak to that firsthand. I, I was signing up units twice as, as often just by using noiseware in my pitch. And then to your point, it's also a retention tool. Uh, you know, if you are a master lease guy, you're not going to get kicked out of the building 
because you've got constant noise issues in the house party that just ruined your reputation. You're able to get out ahead of it. You're able to stop it. And look, noise happens in rentals. Uh, we don't stop noise from happening in rentals. We let you know about it so it's, it can be stopped as quickly as possible. And across our entire user base, the average duration uh, is 22 point something minutes. So uh, if you think about how most laws are written, it's 30 or 45 minutes of continuous noise in, in most markets that I've seen. And our thousands and thousands of users are getting it significantly faster than that are solving the problem. So 100%. I want, to, I want to just share a quick story from a week ago, and then I want to kind of break down how does it all work? You know, for somebody that's never used it, never seen it, you know, we can explain like the devices and then the app and the online portal and like how everything works for notifications. Um, but even last week, like our, it's actually my brother's property that I manage in Seacrest Beach, Florida, kind of near Destin. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> for whatever reason this year in particular, and I've heard this from a lot of hosts, like spring break was like bananas. Like people were going crazy right and the hoa sent him a couple emails like hey we're having these issues there's people like partying all over the place and like i check my security cameras and then i check my noise wear and i'm like well it's not going on here like i have physical evidence of like no like my team monitors that multiple times a day and if they do start making a bunch of noise it's going to send me a text message right away so i'm like they're not partying in my place because i would have known about it already um so it's just another way to cover your butt especially in communities yeah, for sure. And, and a lot of the listeners probably have had the experience of false complaints. Um, you might not even have a renter in there, but your neighbor's just so used to calling the, the hotline or the cops at 8 p.m. every Friday night and, and just trying to get rid of short-term rentals in their neighborhood. Uh, we've actually had people use our data to not only overturn tickets that they received, but to, the tickets ended up going to their neighbor for using government resources uh, under false pretenses. Oh, that's so, awesome. That yeah, is so cool. my car <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Oh my so to your point, Mike, like, you know, it's, it doesn't just let you know that when noise happens, we also have data to prove, like you could go back to uh, July 4th last year. You could go back to New Year's Eve and say, you know, one of your, your neighbors might say, yeah, but you guys have a party every New Year's Eve. You can pull it up and, and go back to that date specifically and, and show you did not have an issue. Mm. Or you did and that you solved it, right? You solved it within 15 minutes. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Real quickly, I just want to give some context for the listeners, especially those that aren't familiar with like what Noise Aware is and what we're talking about. So, Mike, you want to just explain? I should have had one. I've got one somewhere around here. I should. There you go. Oh, there we go. One. Now, now you know I've got a fake Zoom background. <laughs> <laughs> you were doing so well. I know. I was, <laughs> I was keeping movements to the minimum. So Noise Aware is, um, this is an indoor sensor. Um, awesome. For those, for those of you guys listening on iTunes and Spotify, you know, check out the YouTube channel as well because Mike is demoing. He's holding up like what a Noise Aware sensor looks like. So you guys check out the YouTube channel. So it, it looks similar to... Wi-Fi extender or a, a Glade, you know, mm -hmm. smell diffuser, whatever those are called. And you plug it in. There's two different holes. There's one kind of through the center of it and one towards the bottom of it, depending on what outlet type you have. You actually screw it into the outlet faceplate. So a guest doesn't purposefully or unintentionally try and remove it and plug in their, their iPhone charger, their computer charger. And if for some reason a guest does want to pull it out of the wall, we have a tamper notification as well. It will tell you that someone's touched it and then pulled it out of the wall. Um, it's become disconnected. But as soon as you plug it in, you're going to go through our app and it'll, it'll walk you through setup. It's basically like pairing a, an Alexa or a, a Google device to the internet. And we'll ask you some questions like, what type of home is this? Is this apartment or single family? Is it five bedrooms, two bedrooms, whatever? And we'll help you build uh, the thresholds that most people use at that property type. 
And those thresholds are customizable by time of day and by um, actual setting threshold because it might be different in Seaside that quiet hour enforcement starts at 10 p.m., but maybe in Boca it's 8 p.m. So you can always adjust them. Most people don't care about noise during the day, but maybe you only want to care about really, really loud noise that's going on during the day. So it's all custom customizable for you. As soon as that noise has exceeded the threshold, we're going to send you an alert. Now, we're not going to send an alert if it's you know a single clap or a slammed door or someone drops a plate in the kitchen, right? It's sustained noise that is... It gives neighbors headaches and it also indicates property misuse. So we're really looking for between three and five minutes um, of sustained noise before we're even going to alert you because people can get loud. Someone can tell a joke. They can laugh for 30 seconds. We're not going to send you an alert for that. You would get way too many alerts. Uh, hopefully you're, you know, 80% occupied year round and you don't, you don't want to be able to get an alert every single time any noise happens in the property. But that's the, the beauty of our algorithm is you know, we've been at this for six years now. We've monitored more than a million reservations. So we, we've got a really good idea of what is noise that's going to be uh, ind indicative of misuse versus stuff that we should just you know, wash out of the algorithm. That's amazing. And and I love how much thought is going into it, right? Because that's, I've never used it, me personally, right? Like I, we put it in, like, I have clients that have asked me about it, but so far we've never had to, to use it, but I've always been interested in it. And, and some of my first questions were, well, why somebody unplugs it, right? And, and I love the fact that you guys have kind of thought about all of that. Um, so does that, so is it one sensor enough for the whole house or, or is the base, or do you guys have recommendation based on the size of the house, you get certain sensors or extra sensor? Yeah, so it, it really depends. I'd say in 90% of the properties, just a single device is gonna be sufficient uh, because 90% of properties just have a single common space. And it's really if common spaces are on opposite wings of the house or on different floors that you would look at getting multiple sensors. Um, but inside noise is, you know, it, it echoes off the walls. It's, it's fairly easy to pick up. Um, you don't have to be right in front of it or for it to be loud, right? You could have, mm -hmm. you could be in the room next to it pumping the music, but it's still really loud in, in that room. Um, we have an outdoor sensor as well and outdoor sensor you do want to put in the activity zones. So maybe there's a, uh, hot tub on one side of the property and then the seating area is on the other might make sense to have two in that case. Um, because outside noise, you know, it's not reverberating off of the walls or off of the ceilings. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want to be able to be as close to the noise as possible there. Um, but yeah, I mean, most, most of the time, like an apartment or a condo or, or even, you know, a single family home, that's five bedrooms or fewer, uh, a singular device is, is sufficient. Yeah. The outdoor one's nice too. I mean, that, that's been out what, Mike, like a year, year and a half, the outdoor one, uh, go, almost two years now. Yeah. Um, so I've got it right here. It, it looks just like a little hockey puck. Um, yeah. and there's a little butt plate on it that you can run a screw through. We send it with some super adhesive double-sided tape. So if you don't want to run a screw through something, you can tape it. Um, and it is battery operated. It, it talks, it communicates through the indoor device, uh, which extends the battery life. And, uh, you just, pop out the batteries, exchange them. Uh, in most climates, it lasts about six months. In a desert or um, you know, a really cold market, it'll be about four months. Hmm. Love it. Yeah, we've got one up on the, on the deck in Florida at that property. Um, 
and it's nice because it's just a cool spot that people like to hang out. So it's nice that there's an outdoor one too, because it's, if you think of it, people making noise outside, it's going to be a lot more audible to neighbors and everybody else than the ones that are just inside. But having both, that's, that's definitely the way to go. Yeah, for sure. A lot of times people kind of start their parties inside and then move out. So you can actually see on our graphs, like this interchange of the noise changing locations. Um, it's pretty cool to, to see. Yeah, I, love um, that. I love that. So you guys can kind of see what the national trends are based on the data that you have. Yes. Can you, and I don't know if this is something that like you, you have off the top of your head, but I'll be curious to know, like, because as, as we've been saying already, right, like one of the main concerns that owners have is, are there going to be parties? So how often, like, what is the data? Do you have an, an idea of like how often actually you guys help? Yeah, um, kind of stop absolutely. A party? Absolutely. So historically, going back to you know, 2019, the, the never ending year that was 2020, we'll, we'll get to in a second. But 2019, the average property would have one in every 20 reservations would be a noise event uh, that's loud enough to, to disturb the neighbors. One in every 200 reservations was indicative of a, a full-blown party, right? So if you have a single property and you might have 50 reservations per year, um, odds are okay for you. If you have five properties, odds are you're going to have a couple parties a year, right? So during COVID though, um, right around May, June, when things started opening up, mm -hmm. those numbers went from one in 20 stays down to one in 11 stays for noise events wow. and for parties pretty similar from one in every 200 down to uh, a little over a hundred. So it, uh, it was very real, very real. Yeah. Um, and it makes sense. You don't have a place to go. You, you didn't have a bar or a nightclub or a concert or a sporting event. The only place you could go is to gather is rentals, right? Yeah. That's and, why I and, love data. It's amazing. Yeah. It tells and, the story. And to your point already, like we've seen Miami Beach enforce a 8 p.m. curfew. This is the tip of the iceberg for this year. It's going to be uh, a madhouse. Um, we're, we're launching internationally currently, and the UK is going to open up in May. There's going to be so many parties, so much ruckus in the US, in Europe, uh, Australia, everywhere. Once, once lockdowns start to lift, um, we're going to, you know, Airbnb is going to be back in the headlines like, like they have been before for, for parties, but ultimately it's not Airbnb's fault. It's, it's hosts fault and it's property managers fault for not being prepared and, and having the tools to stop these things from happening. Mm. Yeah. And I think one question that I get quite a bit is like, okay, cool. I get this notification. Then what do I do? Right? Like I'm running properties all over the country at this point. People are like, how do you handle that? Right. And my approach has been is a little white lie, but it works very well as I just, I'll message the guests or I'll call them and I'll just say, Hey, so-and-so thanks again for choosing us. Hope you're having a great time. I just, I got to give you a quick call because I just got a noise complaint from one of my neighbors. I don't want to be the bad guy here, but we do have great neighbors and I want to keep it that way. So if you don't mind, please tone it down. Our quiet hours are 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. like we did, talked about, um, but I really appreciate if you could tone it down. And when you do it that way, instead of being like, hey, I got you, like sending them a screenshot, like people are like, all right, RoboCop, like whatever. And they kind of ignore you. But if you come from it, like empathetically, like I'm not trying to be a bad guy. I know you're having a good time, like, but can you please tone it down? I think I've only had one time ever that they kind of ignored that. Right. And then we escalated it to like local boots on the ground, but like most people get it. It's like, you're staying in somebody's house. Like, yep. okay, I don't want to be a jerk. You know, 95% of the time you can resolve it remotely without escalating it. So, mm -hmm. uh, sound, sounds about right for, for your numbers there, Mike. And uh, honestly, I might even be a step nicer <laughs> on, on the first touch. Most of the time, the way we handle it, so we have a, a service called Night Agent, 
It handles after hours messaging to guests um, for property management companies. And it's not something we offer to single owners, but for property management companies, it is a, an added service we have. And our cadence there is the first text is really just saying, hey, you know, E, hope you're enjoying your stay. Just a, a reminder, quiet hours in our community are, are from 8 p.m. until 8 a.m. Uh, people are pretty sensitive around here, so just, wanna, just want you to be careful. And 75% of the time, that first text is, uh, oh, yeah, maybe we're being loud, guys. Let's, uh, let's quiet down. And then the next step is pretty much what you said, Mike. Hey, just got a complaint. You know, time, time to pack it up. You know, turn it down, head off to the bars, do, it, do whatever you want to do. Enjoy your stay, but we, we are a sensitive neighborhood and, and just, want to, just want to keep you from getting a noise citation or whatever. Mm -hmm. And to me, that, that is just a reminder that usually, whoever you, you like to think or not, but I, I always come from this perspective, most people are good people. And most I'm people sure. are not trying to be disrespectful. Most people just get carried away because they haven't seen their family or friends, or you just have like, if you have a big house, you have a lot of couples there and everybody's kind of talking at the same time. And maybe they have a few and they're not necessarily trying to cause a party, but they're just friends hanging out. My Italian family will probably trigger noise aware, just making, making dinner. Right. So it's also the level of how people talk. Um, but most time being aggressive, especially in my experience has never really worked. And I love also what Mike says. I always use the little white lie of I'm not the bad guy, right? It's either my boss or the neighbors or something else happens, regardless of who the decision maker is, because it helps you kind of negotiating. And Chris Voss talks about this in, in his book, Never Split the Difference. You know who the power, who has the power by the people that use we instead of I, right? Most of the time, if somebody uses we as they're talking to you, he has a lot more power than you than, than he wants you to think, and vice versa. The people that are very ego, ego forward, I, I, I really don't, don't have any power. Um, so I love that. Um, so what's what's in the future for you guys? I, I know you mentioned that you guys are are launching worldwide. Is that what you said? Yeah. So we are in uh, kind of late beta for our international launch. Um, so that should be coming pretty soon. Um, and we've got some really cool features to, to make it um, that much better, that much easier to use that are, that are going to be coming out really soon. So had we waited maybe a, a month or so on the podcast, I, I'd be able to talk about it. But um, <laughs> uh, I'd love to come back and we can have a, another conversation soon. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's awesome, man. Well, I, I do want to be respectful of your time. I know we're getting close to the end of our, our slot here. Um, and I also want to thank you guys, because I know you guys hooked our listeners up with a discount code. I'll include all those links down in the show notes. So if you guys are listening, don't look now. I don't want you crashing your car or whatever, but there will be a link down in the show notes. You guys can click and get 20% off um, the device. And then I just, just for context, Mike, just Pricing is normally like a hundred bucks per device and then a subscription for the monitoring. I don't want to push yeah, so that. It's, it's $199 for the first year, which includes the hardware and the service. Gotcha. And then it's 99 bucks a year after that. Perfect. Perfect. Well, well worth the investment. As I said at the 20 beginning. 20% off through you. Yeah. And it's a no brainer. Like even if there was no discount, it's a no brainer, like period. So thank you again to you guys for, for putting that together for us. We really appreciate it. And for the listeners, definitely take Mike and the team up on this. It's just, it's just best practice. So just do it. <laughs> just do it. Um, so with that being said, Mike, where can folks learn a little bit more about you and, and noise aware uh, before we wrap up and ask you the final question? Yeah, I, I'm a total vacation rental nerd. Uh, I love the short-term rental industry. I love talking about it. Um, feel free to find me on LinkedIn, shoot me a, a message. would love to chat. Um, and then NoiseAware is just uh, noiseaware.com. And uh, you can go there and poke around or just go straight to the, the checkout cart and use the, the coupon code Mike mentioned. Love it, man. I love it. Well, the, the last question I'd like to ask all of our guests, 
uh, is what is your number one secret to success with short-term rentals? Good question. I, I think there's different lenses that you can look through, but I think a lot of times people forget that we're in the hospitality space and it's leveraged technology. And, you know, I work for a technology company, uh, but it's efficiency and technology, yada, yada. All of that's important. So you can then spend your time on hospitality. And the hospitality space is great. Everyone is super friendly, super welcoming. They love to talk about the cool restaurants or, or their property or their next vacation. Um, you know, embrace that with your guests and with your travelers. Embrace that with your homeowners. And this, this industry as a whole, it's a Airbnb is worth, what, $100 billion now? But it's such a small knit group uh, of people that are, are about this full time. And mm-hmm. appreciate you guys you know, spreading the word and, and putting out best practices from A to Z. And what you guys are doing is really important. And, and the education of the industry is one of the last frontiers. Uh, and once the whole edu- industry is educated, then, man, it's, it's to the moon for all of us. Mm. I love it, man. Well said. I love it. Yeah. Well, Mike, is always great connecting with you. Next time I'm down in Texas. Well, actually, you're not even there. Where are you based out of again? I'm in Auburn, Alabama. Gotcha. Gotcha. So... Next time we can all travel again. And if you make it down to Texas, we'll have a little noise aware reunion down at, at HQ and, uh, right. and I'll hang out again. And Let's do um, it. again, man, thank you. Thank you again for coming on. Really appreciate it. You know, sharing the message. This is one of those topics that's so important. And a lot of people, it might not be the sexiest topic, but this is vital for this industry on so many different levels because yeah. all the stuff regulations and all these things coming out, if more people just implement some of these best practices, it's going to just save us from being in the headlines more often than we need to be. It's just like, just follow these, some of these basic principles and leverage some of this amazing technology so that we can all continue to grow as an industry. Mm-hmm. And, and, and help let it help you protect your investment, your investment of time, your investment in your listing. Cause what you don't want is to put all this time finding the perfect property, furnish it and everything else. And then, Two months into it, you decided to not follow our advice and get noise aware and the city comes and shuts you down. And then you have to start all over again for something that it's for your benefit, for your longevity. And it's super economical also because you got 20% off. So you really have no excuses (laughs) not to do it. So just go and do it. And yeah, I'm super excited to see what else. Now you kind of left me like this. I, I'm gonna, we're going to have to have you back on so I know what else you guys got coming up on the pipeline. So that's awesome. Yeah, we'd love to. Uh, enjoy the conversation today, guys. And uh, let me know uh, what comes up around the corner for you and, and the hotel launch, Mike. Yeah, thank you. We'll definitely, uh, we'll be in touch for sure. So awesome. we're excited. Awesome. Thanks again, Mike. Take care and we'll speak soon. Thank you, guys. Ciao, guys. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.